got her haircut like that. I sent her pictures of that same haircut last week and told her I was making an appointment to go get my hair done that week. And then she she goes and makes a, gets her hair done the same way, makes an appointment the same day. Yeah, well, I sent her those pictures on Instagram, so I know she saw them. Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys. And as you can tell from the title of the video and my purse here, we're talking about concealed carry methods. And on the table, we've got a couple different options here of concealed carry. We'll go through them, talk about some of the pros and cons of each one. Uh, I'll fire some rounds from those carry positions and we'll just kind of discuss them as we go. Uh, I have some that I prefer. I have some that I don't prefer. With that being said, I've got to start with what, what you saw in, my, in the entry clip there, off body carry, whether it be purse, fanny pack, uh, backpack, whatever, whatever's going to be taken off of your body. I'm not a big fan of those. And, you know, there are circumstances that calls for something like that, such as, you know, you having to go to work and leaving a gun in a vehicle. Maybe you, maybe you put on a fanny pack or a backpack and you leave that in your car because it's easy on and off. When you get out of the gas station, you can put it on, whatever. There are situations that call for virtually anything certain situations but at a consistent carry basis i do not recommend off body carry one of the reasons for it is is access kind of sucks granted i'm not really great at entry in a purse to start with but you gotta unzip it you gotta reach in you gotta pull it out when you do this is not really attached to anything so you may be struggling to get the gun out of the either the pouch that's made for it i know they make those concealed carry purses or the holster that it's in or whatever it's, it's not an ideal carry. It's something that, in my opinion, it's something that you do when you can't carry on body. So that's the way that I look at it. I'm not gonna fire from trying to draw from a purse. I know I'm, I, don't, I don't care to make myself look stupid, but that one may be dangerous for me. So now I'm gonna talk about the other method of concealed carry that I'm not a big fan of. And that is small of the back carry. Now, Granted, when you're walking, just standing up, it's it's comfortable, and it's easily it's it's easy to conceal a firearm in small back when you're standing up. Now, I have one here. You go to bend over, it becomes a little more noticeable. But there are two main reasons that I don't like small of the back. One is that firearm is in a very dangerous place for the carrier if you were to fall. Uh, slip and fall on blacktop. Uh, if you're in an altercation and you get pushed down to the ground and you land on that firearm, where it's located, you can do some serious damage to your lower spine. So if you're carrying small of the back, I highly advise you to take that into consideration. The second thing is it's really difficult to draw from small of the back in a rushed manner to where you aren't sweeping yourself. And you've got to reach behind, pull the gun out, get oriented, and then you have to consciously make an effort to get that muzzle away from you as you come around. So I'm not a big fan of, of small of the back for those two reasons. In a vehicle, it's probably not gonna be ideal for you. This is clear, by the way. Uh, it's not gonna be ideal for you in a vehicle. But like I said, there are circumstances where it's going to be needed and if you're going to if you're if you have those circumstances I highly advise you to practice drawing from this position and practice doing so dry again I, i'm not going to shoot from this position because i don't actually have a, a small back holster so i'm not going to put a, a hot gun in my pants with no holster and then try to draw and shoot from it it's just not a wise move but you know comfortability while you're walking that is a pro it, it it's it is comfortable it's it doesn't you don't have to have uh as much adjustment in your pants when you're doing small of the back just because of the nature of the way most people's backs are contoured uh that's kind of a that's not a real high contact point for your pants or your belt right there in the small of the back but really i with this one unless you have a set of circumstances that that is dire need that you carry small of the back. I don't, I don't really recommend this position either. 
And if, if, if you all do, I'd love to hear those circumstances and, and hear why you carry that way. And maybe you'll change my mind. The next method I want to talk about is one that I use most of the time when I'm carrying concealed. If, if, if I can get away with it, this is the way that I prefer to carry. A uh, couple of the reasons, well, first let me just show you what it is, and that is inside the waistband, strong side, about four o'clock, somewhere in that general area. That's where I prefer to carry. For me, I prefer a carry method that I can get away with with using just one hand. And that is clearing the cover, cover garment with one hand and drawing the weapon. You know, I know FBI statistics says seven yards is uh, the average distance for encounters, but that doesn't mean that all of them are seven yards. Some are farther, some are closer. Some are within bad breath distance. So if you've got someone in your face and, and you've got to present deadly force, it's nice to have that option of using your off hand to create distance with that person, get away and draw your weapon. That, that's a preference of mine, just from a, uh, a training strategy that I've, I've practiced several times. And you know, we can talk about that strategy in a later video and how to go about that and how to protect your off hand in the case that you would ever have to do that because you don't want your hand stuck out here while you have a weapon pointed down range. We can talk about that uh, in a later video. But, you know, there's several options for inside the waistband as far as holster designs. This is just a standard Kydex uh, from CYA Supply. I really like these holster or these holsters. They have a kind of a higher clip mount. So it sets the gun a little bit deeper in your pants. Uh, a lot of people prefer higher ride holsters. That's just a preference thing, comfortability thing. For me, I like them setting kind of low. Uh, one of the downfalls with carrying inside the waistband, no matter what kind of holster that you use, is you do have to kind of tailor your, your clothing to be able to do that. If you wear 34 jeans and they fit, they fit you, it's not gonna be comfortable to wear 34 jeans and shove a gun in there with your body. So you do have to kind of plan ahead of time, have, I generally go up two, two sizes on my pants size. Uh, men's sizing, of course, is like 36 to a 38. As far as women's sizing, uh, can't help you much there. But I'll go up two, two inches on my waist size so that I can comfortably accommodate a gun inside the waistband. Uh, so with that, that being one of the downfalls, that kind of brings on another one, which is its location on your hip when you're driving. If you're a right-handed shooter and you're carrying on your strong side and you are driving a vehicle, your seat belt <laughs> pretty well latches right where your gun is. So drawing a weapon from a vehicle from this position, if you're wearing a seat belt, that's not really ideal. Uh, it, it takes some effort. Now, if you're a left-handed shooter and you're driving, the seat belt is not in the way as much. Or if you're a passenger and you're right-handed, I mean, just the seat belt coming down to latch right by the gun does make it a hindrance as far as being able to draw the weapon. Uh, but like I said, the pros is like it, it's it's easy to conceal it. You can wear a t-shirt, you can wear any kind of top that you want, as long as it covers the top of your pant line. You don't have anything sticking low, you just see your pants. Uh, as long as it covers your belt line, you can conceal inside the waistband. It's also fast for, for me, but I've practiced that way a lot, so it's fairly fast for me to draw from, from concealment in that, in that position. So let's take a few shots that way. Uh, I'll draw a few times, try not to look stupid while I'm doing it, but let's let you have a look at it.
right guys, so the next method of concealed carry we're gonna talk about is probably the, the second most popular uh, method of carry, and that is outside the waistband carry. And I do have a gun on outside the waistband here, and you can see there's nothing showing, but this is a fairly long shirt. I'm kind of a fat boy, I like long shirts. When I bend over, I don't want my ass crack hanging out. So I wear long shirts. But you are dependent on the length of your shirt, the length of your barrel, and the ride height of your holster. So whenever you're taking into account, if, if, you're, if you've already planned you're gonna carry outside the waistband, a long barrel is going to be a hindrance. Your ride height on your holster is gonna to have to be considered so that you get that gun up into your shirt. You know, inside the waistband, you can have however long a barrel you want, as long as you can do it comfortably, because your pants will, will cover the bottom portion of the gun. Here, you're relying on your shirt to cover the entire gun. So, a couple of the pros with uh, outside the waistband carry is, like I said, it's even if you don't carry that way, concealed a lot of people open carry a lot of people carry guns for in the woods for a competition or whatever so you have an enormous choice of holsters there are all kinds uh, kydex leather hybrid whatever you want there's there's going to be an outside the waistband holster made for it if you're carrying an oddball gun you're probably going to have better luck finding an outside the waistband holster than you will finding an inside the waistband holster or something else you know small the back or whatever if it's an oddball uh oddball gun so uh, another pro is this method is also very fast and can be done one-handed so and you kind of have a look here what i've got going on this is a large gun this is a full frame gun and it carries fairly easily outside the waistband while i'm standing here talking to you uh, I will say that on closer inspection of people that carry outside the waistband, unless they're carrying a small gun as well as you would with uh, concealed carry in your waistband or whatever, you can notice it. Uh, it's it, it, it tends to not pull the gun into your body as much as inside the waistband because you've got that belt pulling the gun into your body. When it's outside the waistband, you're just pulling the back of the holster against your body and the rest of it is sticking out as much as it wants to. So it's not as concealing as inside the waistband, but it's just as, it's, it's probably faster than inside the waistband. So let's take a few shots. I'll draw from this, this conceal method and see how y'all, we'll see what y'all think of this. guys so the next method of concealment that we're going to talk about is one that I would consider a deep concealment option and just while we're standing here one of the big perks of that is is while I'm standing here talking to you I actually have my hand on my gun and I am not standing in a posing a threatening manner it's right here yes I intentionally pulled it out of my pocket with the holster on it to show you the holster so, <clears throat> pocket carry. And this is uh, the 642 that's been making an appearance in quite a few of my videos here lately. And I forget the name of this holster, but uh, you can see it's not, it doesn't cover the full gun, it just covers the trigger, which is important for pocket carry. You want to have something solid covering your trigger if you're carrying in your pocket. I know these have a very long, it's clear, have a very long, deliberate trigger pull with the double action mode. But even then, and I use this to illustrate, but I, I do carry an LCP2 in my pocket quite often. But even with a double action J-frame revolver, I still want a holster. <clears throat> and like I said, that covers your trigger in your pocket. Nothing can get to it. You know, if you 
walk into a corner or something, you don't have to worry about that trigger getting grabbed. It's gonna be covered. Uh, and don't ever carry anything else in that pocket. If you're carrying a gun in that pocket, uh, make sure that's all that is in your pocket. And that actually kind of brings me to another point is a dead giveaway for me, for all you guys out there that follow me around and stalk me and wonder what I'm carrying, how I'm carrying. If you see my knife in my back pocket, is because something else is in my front pocket. I normally carry my knife clipped to my front pocket, so if you see it in the back pocket, you know what I've got. But as I said, this the big advantage, one of the big advantages of pocket carry is if you're saying a, a situation presents itself to where it could turn potentially dangerous or it could not turn potentially dangerous and you just don't know, you can be standing here with your hand on your weapon trying to talk down somebody who is angry or, or upset with you and, and could potentially cause you harm. You have the option to be very prepared with your hand on your weapon and not pose any kind of a, and not be presenting yourself in a threatening manner. If I was standing here talking to you like this with my hand on my gun, that's gonna, that's, that could possibly escalate a situation that could have been talked down. So that's one thing to keep in mind on pocket carry. Uh, some of the downfalls of pocket carry, you're gonna have to use a small gun. J frame's about as big as I wanna go. LCP2 seems to work great for me in pocket. I even carry an LCP2 in gym shorts, just standard ball shorts. As long as it's got a drawstring, it's really no heavier than, uh, than a cell phone or something. So it's gotta be a small gun and you've got, a small guns present their own set of challenges. You have to shoot them a lot to be proficient with them. But on the same token, you know, you're talking about seven yards so mm, could be bad breath distance could not be but drawing from standing here talking to you with my hands outside of my pocket isn't that fast at least not for me getting my big bare hands into my pocket getting a grip on the gun so i actually have a grip when it comes out hooking that holster as it comes out and having the gun it, there's a lot to it you've got to train you've got to practice but it's just not as fast for me. It may be for you. Maybe you wear the big Jinko jeans from the 90s. It was popular. And you can stick both hands in one pocket and get a hold of it. I don't know. But for me, getting my big hands into my pocket around a gun and getting a good grip on it so that I know when it comes out, I've got a shooting grip, takes me a little bit more time. So I'll load up this J-frame. We'll shoot a few targets with it and see how that goes. All right, so yeah, I, I had it out here. I don't know why I didn't show it earlier, but this is the LCP2 that I was talking about that I carry quite often. And you see it does have a, a Kydex holster that covers the entire gun. And this side is just flat. Like there's no contours or anything to it. And this side is molded for the gun. So and it also has a thumb brake here where you can push it off in your pocket. But this kind of gives the illusion of a cell phone or something flat in your pocket and takes away that outline of the gun. So I, I really like these types of holsters. So the next method of concealment that I want to talk about is one that I don't have out here to demonstrate, and that is shoulder holsters. Uh, shoulder holsters can be great. They have their role, they have their place, but they do have their downfalls. And you know, as we've talked about all of them, we're gonna talk about their downfalls. Uh, you can get away carrying a fairly large gun with a shoulder holster. It sets right here. Most of them for large guns will have the muzzle uh, pointing down. Some of them will have them pointing straight out the back, kind of like the 
old FBI detectives in the 90s movies carried, you know, the Beretta right here, just rip it out. But uh, for the larger guns, they'll kind of have the muzzle indicating or pointing down, which I think is a good thing. Uh, so, and they can be really comfortable. Uh, I, I actually have a chest rig for uh, XDM 10 millimeter that I've shown y'all several times. And I'll actually carry that chest rig whenever I'm going uh, uh, bow hunting, because when I'm carrying anything in the woods that I'm gonna be using as a primary weapon to take a deer with, if I've got a sling on, crossbow, gun, whatever, I don't want it beaten off of the actual handle of the gun while I'm carrying strong sight. So, <clears throat> and plus sitting in a tree stand, it's easy to access that if I have to. Uh, with a with a bow, crossbow, whatever, if I'm in a tree stand and our area have bears and we're getting really thick with coyotes, uh, I want to be able to access a firearm if I need to from the setting position in a tree stand. So I actually have war shoulder holsters and chest rig holsters quite a bit. I know they, they are comfortable. Uh, one of the big downfalls with that is you have to have a cover garment if you're going to conceal it. And you, it's not going to be a t-shirt. You can't put it on your bare skin and then put a t-shirt over it because then you cannot access it. You have to have an open front shirt. Uh, so if you're going to carry a deep concealment with a button-up shirt and carry it the way that I'm dressed right now, you're essentially you're going to rip the buttons on your shirt, access that firearm if you have to, or you're going to do like the Hawaiian shirts and, and wear a t-shirt with a button-up shirt over top of it and just going to leave it loose in the front. Now I have seen a lot of people utilize shoulder carry in the winter time when they know they're gonna be wearing a jacket all the time. So they just wear their normal attire, put the shoulder holster on, put your jacket on. When you do that, if you're going into a place, uh, a store or going to, to an, uh, a family event and you're still trying to conceal that gun, you have to wear that jacket no matter how hot it is. Me being a fat boy, I'm not a fan of wearing a jacket whenever I'm burning up and I get hot easily. So I'm quick to shed a jacket and so shoulder holster for concealment doesn't really work that well for me and it very well may for you. Another thing with shoulder holster to consider is when you draw that weapon, you are coming out from under your arm. Do not sweep yourself with the muzzle of that gun. So you need to be conscious to get your own arm out of the way. Another thing, and this involves sweeping as well. When you draw from here, everything around you in 180 degrees is going to get swept by that by that firearm there's really no way to avoid it other than some awkward draw where you would draw the gun keep it pointed at the ground and then flip it up at your at your aggressor but I don't see I don't see that practice very often so sweeping, sweeping your, their, your surrounding area, sweeping yourself is an issue with shoulder, care, shoulder holster carry. So guys, I hope you liked today's video. I would say go over to Facebook and check out my Facebook page, but Nazi Zuckerberg decided that the gun dungeon had no place on Facebook and he deleted my account and my Facebook page. So that is no longer accessible. Uh, I do have Instagram, so if you go over there and check that out, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Share these videos. It really helps these, these small channels. Till next time, stay tuned.